Hey everyone, and welcome to Tony for The Demon Within. Uh, I mean, Tony for you. There are countless demons from all over the world. From regional folklore, ancient mysticism, and even modern religion. Sadly though, most of them end up feeling pretty generic. Every culture and religion has a terrifying monster that eats human flesh or whisks away the young to wander eternally in a forest or some other such story. These stories, while they can be scary in their own right, don't necessarily disturb us to the core. Very few demons or spirits in folklore or religion have the ability to keep us up at night and have us questioning our peers, the world around us, or even ourselves. Every now and again though, a certain creature will pop out and really stick with us as being particularly disturbing. I've gathered just a few of the demons that stuck out to me as much more than your average horned devil or flesh-eating monster that deserves more of a spotlight. So, without any further ado, let's dive into my picks for the most disturbing demons from around the world. This video was made possible by the great people over at my Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Also, I have a Discord, so if you want to come chat with me and other wannabe theologists, come join and hang out. Number 5. The Kappa from Japanese Mythology This Japanese spirit will definitely seem like a surprising pick for the first entry on the list. Often, these turtle humanoid yokai are portrayed in quite a cute way in contemporary media, but the original story of this being is much more terrifying than child-friendly. Kappa are Japanese spirits whose name translates to river child, though they are also sometimes called river tiger or more menacingly, horse puller. They are often portrayed as a humanoid bipedal turtle with a hard carapace and head that looks like a balding man. This feature is not simply because of unlucky genetics, however. On the top of their heads, there is a depression that holds water, called a Sara dish. As long as the dish holds water, the kappa is at full strength, and based on their name of horse puller, they are pretty strong. But if the water is spilled, the spirit is severely weakened. They have a lot in common with humans, actually. Their favorite food is a cucumber, and they love to pass the time with each other by engaging in sumo wrestling competitions. So, you might be asking, what makes these cute little guys so disturbing? Well, it comes down to what they do to humans, as they are not always too fond of us. In Japanese mythology, there is believed to be a mythical organ called a shirokodama. This small sphere contains one's very soul and is quite inconveniently placed inside the colon. In other words, pretty deep inside your butt. Like any other spirit in Japanese myth, not all of them are nice, and some desire the souls of humans to gain strength. So kappa were sometimes known to drag swimmers under the water and violently… retrieving this mythical organ the easiest way they knew, by ripping it out through the anus. Since many bodies of the drowned were found with their behinds prolapsed, these were believed to be the deeds of the kappa. It makes me cringe just thinking about it, as if drowning by itself wasn't bad enough. Number 4 is the Skinwalker of Native American mythology. This is an entry I believe will require a lot less justification, but for those who don't know the story of this menacing beast, let me explain. In the native Navajo culture, there exists a set of values they must adhere to. Things like maintaining balance in mind, body, and spirit, valuing love and family, and respecting the natural order of nature. Nothing out of the ordinary and really quite noble, but there are those among them that would deny such values. Certain men and women who aim to disregard any semblance of balance and respect for the natural order to achieve whatever sick goal they have in mind. The thing that makes these entities so disturbing is that anyone outside of the Navajo culture proper knows very little about them or the witches that they derive from. The simple reason is because all that belong to the tribe, from the spiritual leaders to the average worker, outright refuse to discuss it. They believe that even if they were willing to reveal more information, it could not properly be conveyed due to the immense gap in cultural significance. Despite this, there are a few things we can extrapolate from the legends. Animals associated with death and evil, such as coyotes and wolves, may be a skinwalker in disguise, either possessing the creature or wearing their skin like a suit. These beasts grow immensely in size and ferocity, attacking members of the Navajo tribe in life or death battles. In some extremely disturbing cases, skinwalkers have been known to possess or wear the skin of other human beings as well. There is nothing more terrifying than losing yourself, being a prisoner in your own body. 
Or, in the worst case, having your mangled corpse tarnishing your memory by turning against the ones you loved in death. Try not to think about this next time you find yourself out in lovely nature. Number 3. The Doppelganger of German Folklore This entity is another one holding the fear of losing your sense of self, literally translating to double walker. This is the first entry on the list that holds pretty much strictly a metaphysical horror rather than posing a physical danger. Essentially, this entity is an exact copy of you, but not one you have any control over. They act independently and always out of reach, only talked about in the past tense when you're around. As far as you know, they may have a completely different personality and set of values, maybe even being the exact opposite of you, acting of their own will, dragging you along with them with every step. You better hope you never see your doppelganger either, because if you do, your death will quickly follow. There are many claimed cases of doppelgangers throughout history, with all of them having a pretty grim ending. Abraham Lincoln claimed to have seen his doppelganger shortly after he was elected president. He sat down in front of a mirror, and in the reflection he saw two faces. One, he said, was his own face, while the other was a pale imitation. When Lincoln told his wife, she interpreted it as an ill omen. His wife thought he would be elected president twice, but during the second term, he would certainly die. Sure enough, that's exactly what happened, as he was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth during his second term. Catherine the Great was a Russian empress who was woken up by her servant in the middle of the night. They claimed to have seen her enter the throne room, which could not possibly be true, as she was never seen to have left her bedchamber. But, oddly enough, when they went to investigate, they saw her doppelganger sitting on the throne, upon which the guards were ordered to shoot at the apparition. The bullets had no effect, but eventually the doppelganger did disappear, and not long after, Catherine the Great died of a stroke in that same year. There could very well be a doppelganger of you or I out there right now, and you may never know of its existence. But for both of our sakes, let's hope we never meet them. Number 2. Preta or Hungry Ghost in Buddhist Mythology In Buddhism, there is not one, but many hells, and I mean many, that each have unique punishments for different sins. And of all the fates you can suffer in the afterlife, becoming a Preta or a Hungry Ghost is perhaps the most disturbing of the bunch. While it isn't as viscerally horrible as an eternity in Hellfire, the Hungry Ghost's fate is still an unsettling one. When you meet your end, you are reincarnated into one of six paths based on the karma you accumulate in life. Those being the path of God, human, asura, animal, hungry ghost, and hell. To make it to hungry ghost or gaki, you have to have a considerable amount of bad karma, but not enough to land you in the same bucket as the worst of the worst. There are 36 documented classifications of Hungry Ghost, all meant to punish the sin committed in life. The realm of the Hungry Ghost itself is unique in that they are not tied to that plane of existence at all. Being situated right above Hell and right below Earth, they can freely travel to and from their land as an invisible specter, but doing that might be more torture than just staying put. And that brings us to what makes the Hungry Ghost actually so disturbing. The constant between every hungry ghost is obviously that they are always hungry, but their curse is what they individually feed off of, and it's never very pleasant, and that's if they can feed at all. Some variations of these doomed souls include the needle mouth ghosts. If you lie about your ability to donate food to a monk, you will become a being whose mouth is the size of the head of a needle, but with a stomach the size of a mountain. Cursed to never feel any satisfaction from the food you eat, but always shoveling in what little you can. If you trick a monk into eating meat with your donation, you will become a hungry ghost who can only feed on excrement of living creatures. And if you kill a person to steal their money, you become what is known as a cauldron body, a massive lumbering creature with no face and hands that end in stumps. Their stomach is filled with an ever-burning fire that tortures with no escape for the heat. There are many more of these creatures, and if you want to scare yourself, feel free to read through the rest. Small comfort is that their fate is only temporary, and they will be free in 500 years. But one day in the life of a hungry ghost is the equivalent of one month of a human, so strap in. And you better be ready to have some acquired tastes when you're done. Number 1. 
Asmodeus or Ashmodai of Abrahamic mythology. I actually covered Asmodeus in his own video, so if you want to learn more about him specifically, check the video out. But for the justification of why he disturbs me so much, it's something I didn't actually cover in detail in that video. There is one part of the Testament of Solomon that shows Asmodeus as quite possibly the most horrible and menacing being to have ever existed. Solomon and Asmodeus have a dialogue that reveals much of his worldview and potential history. The demon states he is the son of the dragon, potentially being Lucifer and a mortal woman. He also believes he has a place in heaven, regardless of his position as a demon prince. But what's most striking is he seems to be much more cold and calculating than any other demon. As when Solomon spoke to or interrogated any other spiritual being, even demon princes, they gave him an element of respect or reverence, but not Asmodeus. When Solomon spoke to him, Asmodeus said plainly, So ask me not many things, for thy kingdom also after little time is to be disrupted, and thy glory is but for a season, and short will be thy tyranny over us and then we shall again have free range over mankind, so as that they will revere us as if we were gods, not knowing, men that they are, the names of the angels set over us. Almost no other demon shows this level of confidence in their power over humans. Asmodeus's power specifically is strictly to sow dissent, lust and murderous rage in the newly wedded as well as any loving family. To affect one so strongly that they break the bonds of trust in lust and sometimes even kill their spouse in a blind rage. To have this much influence over humans just shows how powerful he truly is. To add to it, Asmodeus is nearly omniscient in seeing the lives of humans, past, present, and future. As when Solomon finally manages to subdue the demon and travels back to his kingdom with him, Asmodeus comments on many passers-by. He laughs at the suffering and misfortune of humans, foretelling of many of their untimely demises, and even goes so far as to openly weep at their successes and displays of love. Asmodeus truly is evil to the core and thoroughly loathes all that makes humans happy and righteous. There are absolutely no redeeming qualities. An entity hell-bent on your suffering and downfall, with an eternity to plan for your eventual stay in the abyss, is a truly terrifying and disturbing being. Well, that covers my top 5 most disturbing demons. Let me know which of these was the most disturbing to you in the comments down below, and while you're down there, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to leave your own picks if I missed some that stand out as truly terrifying to you as well. I love learning about this stuff, even if my sleep takes a hit sometimes. Special thanks to Andre Vinicius da Silva Valens, Anton, Arctic Mirror, Kalos, Goose Kebab, Jeter Michelle, Just a Middleman, Matt M, Patty123, Stuart Ash, The Digital Dutchman, Videogamer75, and many more for supporting the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the link in the description below. Thanks for watching this disturbing demon breakdown, and I'll see you in the next Tony for You. Have a good one.